As this is the first in what I hope to become a series of videos, I thought it would be instructive to talk briefly about the art of building miniature models from scratch and how I became a model maker. I was born in 1942, so my childhood years spanned an era where little was available in the way of toys or model kits. So anything we youngsters might be inspired to build, with the aid of a few scraps of firewood and a blunt pen knife, were almost certainly doomed to failure. Personal involvement in the craft was basically a non-starter. Academically, I did not shine. However, the one thing I was quite good at was painting. And at the age of 13, won a scholarship to a new and experimental two-year course specializing in fine art. And at 15, I moved on to art school where I remained until I was 21. It's only in comparatively recent years that I've become very aware of the benefits that such an education bestowed. It was an education where the whole emphasis was about what you might call an almost spiritual path to self-development, creativity and meaning. Commercial art was frowned upon. We were encouraged to pursue excellence for its own sake and not in any sense for monetary gain or even as a means of earning a living. Yeah, believe it or not, that's true. And certainly to some extent, the same could be said of most university education in those days. Yeah, it's a very long way from today's ethos, I fear. And I'm pretty sure it made for happier and more fulfilled people. Well, when I left art school, I took to teaching as a way of earning a living, working in various colleges and schools, teaching mostly fine art, pottery, and a little photography. And in 1971, I coincidentally took a great fancy to a ship model that had drawn my attention that I'd seen in a shop window and discovered at a local library building a plank on frame ship model by our Harold Underhill. I mention these few autobiographical details to give you an idea where my particular approach to ship models comes from, all very much shaped by my education and involvement in the art world. So I see the change from painting on canvas to crafting pottery from clay to building ship models from timber as a transition in media, the purpose and the drive to create art remains the same. When I first started building ship models back in the early 1970s, I very quickly realized the difficulty of building a ship model from scratch when just working from a set of plans. Fortunately, I lived not too distant from the London museums and I would make numerous trips in order to take photographs and make notes and drawings. Those photographs proved to be such a help in understanding the ships and their fittings that I very much doubt I would have been able to get those early models off the ground without them. So, my intention here with these videos is to give a very abbreviated run through the pictures of the process and the methods used during the build, doing my best to cover all parts and details of the finished model. And I hope that at some future time, this may prove to become a usable resource for any aspiring model makers as well as being of some interest and give a little pleasure to those with no previous experience of the subject. We are in fact facing a dearth of young people engaging with the craft. It's really quite tragic because the rewards can be enormous. If indeed you are tempted, I have written four books on the subject 
each taking the reader step by step through the build of a particular model with the aid of hundreds of photographs, each accompanied by text explaining in detail the content of the photos. One more thing. When people view my models, there are a couple of very common and almost immediate responses. Uh, the first one, where do you buy the parts? No parts are bought for these models. As far as I'm aware, there are no available parts to buy. Even if there were, they would almost certainly be inaccurate or out of scale, or to use them would for me detract from the whole concept of a work of individual art. The second one, I wouldn't have the patience to do something like that. Well, I see many of the tasks that we carry out in our homes and workplaces as requiring immense amounts of patience, certainly on occasions. But building a model with all that entails the research, the history of the ship and the period, the mastering of new skills and methods, and most of all, the satisfaction that we experience finding solutions to accomplish each task is the real reason we engage with something as challenging as this. So now to the first model. This model is of the Anne of 1678. She was one of the third rates of King Charles II's great ship building program of 1677 and is depicted here as she would have appeared in 1687 while conveying Maria Sophia of Newburgh from Rotterdam to Lisbon to marry Don Pedro II. Such an accurate depiction of a vessel, uh, particularly of this period, has been made possible due to the meticulous and in-depth research carried out by Richard Enser, whose books, plans and paintings are designed to become the benchmark resource for model makers, researchers and academics interested in ships of this period. I have to say that I have never had such in-depth and accurate research for a model. He published his work, which included the history of the ship, in a book, The Warship Anne, should any of you be interested. The model was made from two blocks of gelutin. These were carved to the external dimensions of the vessel before hollowing out the insides. All surfaces were then individually planked with either boxwood or yellow cedar. The gratings were built to scale from boxwood and the rigging is all carried out using pre-painted copper wire. Strands of various thicknesses are used either individually or wound together to produce ropes of the correct thickness. The model was built to a scale of 16 feet to the inch, giving the hull a length from figurehead to the stern of 11 inches. The base of the case was made from some old pine wood I had and that and the glass cover framing are veneered with burr walnut veneer. The sea was carved from a block of Tupelo. And one other item of interest is the capstan to be seen just below the ship's boat midships. It was built from a tiny scrap of tree nail, um, that's a dowel, that came loose during an inspection of the wreck of the Anne. The wreck is located at pet level near Hastings and is, on very rare occasions, exposed by extreme low tides.